Are we all ready on your end then, Nina? I am. Fantastic. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's talk. Uh, my name's Sam, and I'm excited to be your host this evening. I'm a climber, I'm an alpinist and a runner, amongst some other things. Um, when I'm not in the outdoors, you'll find me in Ellis Brigham in Manchester. So if you're ever in town, please feel free to pop by and say hello. Uh, for tonight's chat, we are joined by our Terex athlete, Nina Capre. Thank you for being here with us tonight, Nina. Thank you for inviting me. Our pleasure. Um, over the next 40 minutes or so, Nina will chat about her latest film, Mercy La Vie, where she opened up a new climbing route on the north face of the Eiger in Switzerland. This is arguably the most difficult route on the Eiger at the minute. Um, there'll be an opportunity to take your questions that's throughout the presentation. Uh, if you're watching on, on Zoom, uh, please pop them in the Q&A at the bottom. We're also live on Facebook, so if you're watching over on there, uh, please pop your questions into the comments. We've got somebody on there monitoring, monitoring them. Uh, I'll now hand over to Nina, and I hope you all enjoy this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nina. Thank you. So yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, route on the Eiger. It's a very special route called Merci la Vie. To me, it's very special because uh, with two friends of mine, Sean Villanueva and uh, Roger Shelley, we opened that route like during one summer. And then the summer after uh, we sent, so we free climbed the route. So it's pretty cool actually to be really, to be in the part of like the creation and then also just sending the route. So merci la vie. Um, okay, I just go. Here we go. To me, I never pick up goals just because, uh, just because I should do it or whatever, or it's super, I don't know. To me, it's always like certain circumstance they make that I pick up a wall or then a line. And it's pretty awesome actually. So in summer 2019, I spent a bunch of time in, uh, in Switzerland in general. And it was the first time I, I climbed uh, on the Eiger North Face, which is for a Swiss person, a pretty big day, I would say. And on top of that, my family was there. So it was really a good combination of like climbing and then going back down to Grindelwald and enjoying family and the kids and stuff. So I first climbed the route La Vida Silbar with my colleague. And uh, it was a really, really, I would say a really big day. We actually planned to climb that 900 meter uh, route in two days. But then at some point it was just, everything was just rolling and we decided to, to do like a one day push. And that was absolutely great. Like climbing like a, I think we were climbing for 20 hours in that big phase of like the Eiger North face, which is actually like a 3000 meter high wall. And um, it was a good um, climb, good combination between like very solid steep rock and pretty tough and high exposed like Alpine, Alpine style, as you can see here, where it's definitely not allowed to fall. Anyways, at like, I don't know, just, right after dark we arrived at the top and since we left our bv stuff back in the bv we rappelled down for like three hours we stuck a rope we had to cut the rope you know just like somehow typical like big wall adventure and then that was the big bv we we spent the night at or at somehow the night at and we were pretty lucky um because the next day a big storm came up and uh, our decision was really good that we climbed uh, La Vida Cidad in one day. And also like it has never really been done before, except our colleagues like Sean and Roger, they made like a one day ascent. Sean was the first freeing that route in a day and I was then the second person. And on our way back with Emmerich, we crossed ways in, um, with Sean and Roger because they, 
they went back to the route in the lower part to have like a little photo session and we wrapped down. But that was pretty awesome to uh, to meet them in the middle of the wall. And yeah, that's just, I don't know. We were super happy that everyone was still alive and everyone was pretty, you know, happy, successful. And after that, that's often when you kind of spend time with some climbers on the wall. Um, you often also just share like um, rooms, you share a flat, and this is actually like Roger's flat. We turn out to be the total base camp for so many climbers during all summer. And of course, gypsy climbers, everyone just crashed in and we slept on the balcony and we had really good barbecues and we made some tarts and cleaning and all this stuff. And it's really important that you have also that feeling with a person that you know when you go for a wall, you can really trust them and it's, it's just the feeling is there. So one day Roger came up with the idea to open a new route because he's like the, the local person in like Ringelwald. I think he climbed the Eiger for 54 times now and he knows so many things over there. So he asked us if he wanted to climb um, on the Eiger and open a new route. And All that's right. how it looked like day one. Here we are, let's start our adventure. So this is actually a part of the of the Eiger uh, to its right. Um, maybe you heard about uh, the pillar of Geneva. This is the one Genfertfile called. So it's not like a, a very very high part of the wall, but it's 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 kind of it's kind of high. It's like eight to ten pitches long. The route in there, and one really famous is Deep Blue Sea. And so we opened a new route just on its left. And Roger actually started that project already two or three seasons ago, but he found nobody who wanted to, um, to follow or just to who had really had, a, um, I don't know, experience enough to, to attack this really steep part of, part of the wall. And so we, bolted like ground up and I don't know if you ever have bolted in your life but it's pretty exciting especially when it's on uh, limestone um it's super intimidating you it's really hard to read the line it's not so hard to read the rock often you can see like yellow parts are pretty shitty rock like often in north faces and like the great perfect rock is just so solid so it's kind of tricky to um, to find like really um, the best line in always good rocks. And of course we found also some really poor rocks. And it is really, um, I would say, I would say it's exciting, but it's also scary to hang on on your hooks and like the drill machine is on the bolt below and your tagline is always kind of fucked up. So, and you have all the gear, it's not like trap climbing in granite where you just have like really good solid cracks you place gear it's all good it's like on limestone it's not so 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 uh solid or i don't know it's just more difficult so we shared the bolting and uh it often took like two to three hours to open a pitch just like ground up um you look completely destroyed afterwards, like super destroyed, like no more energy, your nerves are, are pretty and high tension. So the key for that is definitely to have like good Swiss chocolate in the wall, to have good partners, to have a lot of tape uh, because you're just bleeding everywhere or at least I was bleeding from all the hammering. And so we shared uh, the parts, um, every one of us, did some leading, bolting, ground up. Sometimes we shared also the, the pitches when it took too long. And honestly, when it takes a long time, well, that's what Sean and I did. I 
as you can see, like Roger, I think he was for two hours in that pitch and it was super hard. And so we just uh, switched the layers. We took a nap in the wall and everything is good. So Merci La Vie was, um, it was really, really lucky that uh, Roger knew the wall like so good. But from time to time, so we just um, went to a wrong place, like on the picture to its right. You can see Sean trying and trying and trying and there was just no way to go up. Uh, it also drove us to a part where really the rock is really poor, as you can see on the left picture, picture on the left. Um, and that's the coolest thing like with bolting. So you go first and you do like a ground up bolting, a first ascent. And then after that, you kind of try to remodel the route if it needs to. Sometimes when you're in a, in a belay station, you can see from the top then, oh, that would be better to go a little bit more to the right or a little bit more to the left. So sometimes it happens that you just place like two other balls to give it another direction. Um, but yeah, that's that's the that's the game. And um, check this out. Like this is really cool. Yeah, ball. where are we? North face of the anchor. I would say paradise. Okay. In paradise. Mythic, my mythic. So that's pretty unique. I think it was in August. Um, there's like at the in the on the, in the month of August, there is the sun hits the wall a little bit at the end of the day. And once you've been freezing and spend all day in shade, just like bolting and drilling and like being scared, like that little sunshine is just ah, oh, it's really rewarding. And yeah, to the, as you can see in the picture to the left, there's also a lot of shade, a lot of cold weather windows, um, a lot of big clouds coming up. Uh, we found ourselves once in a super big thunderstorm, just, uh, just uh, it just came from the back of the Eiger and it just, we got caught in it. And um, it is super epic, super epic, kind of freaked out. And at the end of the day, back at the bimmy, you feel pretty exhausted and, but at the same time, so happy. Like the things you share on the wall, because actually it is mostly like a little bit of fear and unknown and um, excitement. You feel super relieved and also super, profoundly connected with uh, the place you are and the people you are and just um, I don't know I'm often like at the end of the day I was so overwhelmed with like feelings and um, I was yeah I don't know what else to say so as I told you like Roger um, is a very good alpinist he's more famous for his really hardcore A descents and um he bolted so many rides at the route at the Eiger North Face. And he actually was a big uh, teacher or big teacher. Yeah, he taught us so many things about bolting and all the techniques and all the sky hooks and whatever, copper heads, like so much gear I had not never used actually. It's, you know, it's just always down in my cave and I never use it. Um, so that was interesting because um, it's super important to be a, like if you open up a, a route to be a very balanced crew. Uh, so Roger was definitely the, um, the, the strongest person when it came down to bolting techniques. And um, Sean was just so strong in his climbing and has so no fear that he was super efficient and so rapid. He also took the biggest falls, I would say. And I was somehow, somehow just like there and learning and um, my time climbing skills were definitely uh, really good. Like I had a lot of power, uh, I learned fast. And um, so yeah, that was great. We were a really, really, really great crew. 
Um, we never took like super stupid risk or so, but still we tried to place only bolts when it was necessary. And if there was a crack or just like a natural feature, we just place slings and like cams and all this stuff. So it made it a little bit spicy, but not uh, too much, not dangerous. That's Sean working on one of the pitch and top rope. So if you're like a group of three or even like more people, the good thing is that someone can somehow bolt and the other person can check out the, the brand new fresh um, line and just see if it works or it doesn't or cleaning. Cleaning is always a big part of, the, of opening a new route. This is Roger in the golden light and you can see the view on uh, Grindelwald in the background, and you can see really this enormous wall. Here we go. That's me and like trying um, one of the hardest pitch um, of the route. It's an eight plus, very overhanging, super pumpy, uh, forty meters route. Like incredible, like how steep the rock is there how solid and like how dynamic and how big the movements are. It's, it's so much fun to climb in. And yes, like I told you before, bad weather surprises one day, we're just totally stuck in this like fog and then a really big thunderstorm came up and yeah, after the rain, the sun. That's really eager how it can be so surprisingly like bad weather although like a half an hour ago it is just really good weather that was i would say one of our last um days opening the route so we opened the route in three sessions no wait two sessions so first session we were on the wall for four days and a month later, we finished the route and we were spent another three days on the wall. Yeah, that was on the last day when we, we finished the route. We freed actually all the pitches, uh, like one here, one there, one person here, one person there. So we knew it was really possible. And that was really a great, um, a great end of the, of the Iger season. Back to the BD very dirty very smelly but yeah the fatigue is a is a really positive positive thing to me really remember like how how much we can really put into an effort or how much we can just believe in like creating a new thing and how much fun it is like we were we had so much fun and since Roger lives in like Grindelwald since ever, he has, of course, all his good connections and like all his good uh, links. And so we ended up actually in a four star spa resort. Roger had just to do a little phone call. And that's where we enjoyed ourselves after this uh, exhausting opening route session on the Eiger. But you know what, it's kind of cool to relax and to lay down and to enjoy yourself. But after a while, I just miss it being out there, like feeling this energy of nature and like this capacity to living this moment as on its fullest because you're out there and you're super focused. And uh, that's so great, that's so great. So, for me, it was pretty clear that the season after I wanted to go back and uh, being in a good shape and to free all the pitches in a day. And so that's what I did. I checked out um, and I asked Marcos Costa, a really good climbing partner of mine, if he would be psyched to check out the route a little bit. Uh, Roger had actually the opportunity to send her out to free the route a little bit early in the season. He was just jumping on a weather on a weather window because climbing in Jaeger is not um, so easy. It often rains, it's often wet, so it's 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 actually 
it's actually a really rare, pretty rare week where you can spend a lot of time on the mountain and um, it can change super fast. But Marcos and I, we found a really good um, weather and he was super psyched to join me on the drought, just to check it out, to clean a little bit and just to discover this, this pearl, I would say. We had so much fun up there. Um, I have to say, I was a little bit surprised about uh, the route. I had some memories of the route from like last summer, but I have to say that, that so many parts of the wall or parts of a, I don't know, a pitch, that it was just a white, like, I, I imagine that I was so tired or so exhausted that I just skipped that part or maybe I was just like so destroyed from like opening one pitch and then the next one I was just jumaring or whatever, top roping, but not really climbing. So I was actually really surprised about um, how, um, yeah, just about the route in general. And for people like, that's one of the best beavers in the world. Like if you ever have the chance to go and to hike up to the towards the Eiger, like let me know and I will tell you where that is, baby spot is. It's so pretty. It's actually just you have to walk 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 up like ten more minutes and then you can uh, you are at the pillar of Geneva, and it's wow, it's so 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 pretty up there. Like in those moments, I feel so connected with the nature and my sport and. Uh, with who I am there, like, I'm just really, really so grateful for, for what I can do, what I'm, for the freedom I have, and um, damn, yeah, it's awesome. And then Marcos had to leave, and uh, Roger offered to give me a catch that I will be able to free send the route as well. So Roger, the local hero, just uh, join me. I asked him if he will be, yeah, just happy to give me ballet. And uh, he was. So as I told you, he was able to stand the route a little bit earlier in the season and was, was really excited to go back and to support, like fully support. We were filming a little bit. We took some photos and uh, to him, it was super relaxing and he just enjoyed himself and the route and uh, he of course does supplied me with some really good swiss cheese and some really good chocolate this is actually really the base of when you climb a wall it's like something really good self savory and uh, a really good chocolate so it's fun roger being with roger is super fun he is um super familiar with the wall with the place he's a really good um He's very, very supportive. That's him climbing in top rope while I was sending. And um, yeah, I felt super comfortable um, being up there with him, with the people I opened the route. Unfortunately, Sean was still at that time stuck in Patagonia. I think he still is actually. Yeah, since COVID, he never came back actually. And so, yeah, that was a bummer that the crew wasn't complete, but um, Roger was there and that was great. And I felt super safe and super confident. And I had to try really hard, um, but yeah, I made a free ascent. And I think it, um, it is something very, very special when you and, uh, and a team were, were a team of three, you opened around and, and then you send her out. It just, it is another feeling, but I would say even more than your proper sense is it really makes you happy to support other people or to see other people sending you out. And then you ask, hey, what do you think about it? And like, is the line logical? Like, how are the protections? Do you find it's okay, it's spicy, whatever? It's just so exciting to be, um, yeah, the creator is something new and then other palm climbers, they go and they enjoy themselves so much and they have so much fun. And it's, yeah, I haven't experienced that too much, like only three times, I would say, 
opening like a really long, long route, but it is something very, very special. And then, yeah, one more like Switzerland, Interlaken, Jaeger, it is, um, to me as a Swiss person, although I live since a couple of years in France, it is, um, it is a very iconic mountain. And more than that, I feel that I've been lucky to do so much traveling. Uh, I've I had the chance to see so many places on, on the earth and so many things, but yeah, still like Switzerland is, is just one of the best. Like there's nothing, nothing to say. It's one of the best. And so here you can have a look at the topo. If some of you are excited to go there, the topo is also on my website. And uh, I'll be super happy to give you some advice if um, one time you want to go there. It's, yeah, I'm super proud of the work we did. I'm so proud of the, of this pretty pearl and uh, just the experience was very unique for me. So thank you. Thanks for listening. That was it. Well, that was great. Uh, thank you very much, Nina. Uh, it looks like an incredible route. I like how you've left the, the topo up there for us all to, uh, all yes. to aspire to something. It hmm. might be a little bit of time before I'm on that one, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, so I think there will still be some more more questions coming in uh, mm -hmm. but if you if you if you're happy i've got a few ready to go to ask you sure sure um, should i go back to my screen or whatever works for you it may be the inspirational topo or a nice inspirational photo will look good on screen while we discuss the question i yeah. know yeah, we can also chat that is true um it's true so first of all um can we, can we know a little bit more about where the, the name for the route came from, Mercy La Vie? Where did that, uh, where did that originate? Mm -hmm. So the name of the road expri um, describes actually the, um, the vibes on the wall. Like um, sometimes you take risk when you're out there and it is, it's not always super safe and you can't calculate everything. So every day when we're back at the BV, we were just saying that, like, merci la vie, it's like such a present. And we are so lucky to be there and to share this really incredible adventure. And also, I mean, I don't like taking too many risks uh, because I really love life and enjoy it in its fullest. And we lost some of our partners, climbing partners or just friends like on that wall on the Eiger or somewhere else in the mountains. And it is also uh, homage to people we lost on that mountain. But it really describes like this magic, this magic like ambiance we had on the wall, like with this perfect sunsets and like the 4 a.m. Uh, alarm clock and just this big laugh on the wall like we had so much fun on the wall that was great that's fantastic what a what a great name for the route then mm. um we've had uh, one question come in and it was basically if you could describe a little bit about the the process of how you uh chose where where each where the line of each pitch would go were you just looking for natural features or was it a little bit more or were you having to search a little bit more for, for the route? Yeah so as I told in the presentation Roger is a local guy there from since ever he opened I would say he opened at least five routes and the entire like face and he spent so much time there so he knew which um, part is like good rock and where is the possible potential to set up a really good line and uh, so he checked that out from far or also just like from close from the the routes close to and uh, he had a really good idea where it could be possible to free climb but then actually once in a while it's a total other story because it's imagine like one part was really like it was a big overhang and you're just there and you're like huh 
should we start to our right or to our left? Like what's after? Like we can't know. And so sometimes you just bail, you go and then there's like, it's just not possible or there's just too, too much like loose rock or just yellow rock, which is pretty sandy. So it is actually pretty tricky. And uh, once more, um, well, often you just go and you follow natural features, of course. But then sometimes it's just so hard. There's just little crimps and little edges and there's not really like a line. So you just go and try and try and you try with your sky hooks and another sky hook and another sky hook. And if it doesn't work, well, you go back down. <laughs> It sounds terrifying to us, me and Paul. No, so not knowing where we're going, but okay. No, oh, but I mean, fantastic. It, it sounds terrifying, but I mean, I don't know. It's just a super exci exciting thing. And the more you feel comfortable, the more you can really just uh, open up your vision. And the, the more you're terrified, the more you're just like, oh my God, there's no obvious hold in like around like a meter here so it's it's like in climbing once you're super terrified and super in your red zone you, you can't even see your feet anymore and that's somehow the same with opening and when you're kind of yeah relax you're like yeah i should take a step not a step back but mm -hmm. i mean i should, should look more and be more calm and fantastic i mean what, a, what an experience what an experience um, we've got a question in the, the chat from, from Jennifer. Uh, she was she's saying that there are so many fantastic films uh, about male climbers and how can we get filmmakers to focus or provide a little bit of balance uh, by focusing a little bit more on female climbers. Do you have any insights on that? How so can... what about the films she was uh, saying, talking about? No, there's not any films mentioned specifically. It's just in general that there are so many films uh, specifically about men and how oh, we can maybe men. get okay. some more films um, about females in general. Well, I think the main problem is that men, they need to nourish their ego. So they love, <laughs> they love making like YouTube videos and like you know, showing how strong they are and whatever. It's a little bit like a phenomenon I can somehow, um, you know, just see. And um, also I think it's because like men and women, they climb so differently. A uh, woman would never say, hey, look at my climb, it's so smooth and it's so effortless and I'm just totally balanced. It's more just a thing you feel and you do, but you would not be like, hey, look at me, I climb so well, so let's video that. And men often have tension to be like, oh my God, look at this dino I just did. We should film that and we should publish it in a YouTube video. That was so great. So this is like, maybe, maybe I'm just, Maybe it's really not the, the truth, but I can see that. And um, I think it doesn't really matter if you're like man or woman, if you um, want to inspire people. It is not a thing you put an effort on it. I mean, you can't force yourself telling yourself, OK, I want to inspire people. I, what kind of video can I do to inspire people? It's more just like a natural thing that comes up. and. Um, it's a big effort, like mm -hmm. making climbing videos. If it's not like just filming a boulder where you can just have a steady cam and uh, you know sit down with a camera, it's uh, it's complicated. So I don't know if many climbers are really have the capacity to set up steady road or just to deal with all the technique and logistic about you know just sending a cameraman up there. But I don't know. I don't have the answer. Like. I think it's just a thing that should be naturally and um, <clears throat> I don't it sounds know. like it's progressing in the right way anyway now isn't it there's more and more more and more films coming out focusing on uh, phenomenal achievements by, by everybody so hopefully naturally things are going to start to balance themselves out as well a little bit and people like yourself are certainly leading the charge there with, with films being made about them on fantastic routes and helps. This is true. I think it's maybe also a reason because uh, you, um, how do you say, like the promotion, the self-promotion today became such a big part of the climbing that it's yeah. often when you imagine you're like a young climber star starting today, 
like everyone is telling you, hey, what is your Instagram account? account? And mm. this puts a lot of pressure on like people. They're like, yeah, I do climbing and actually I have to show something, right? Versus when I start climbing, I was just, I, there was like no social media, short. And um, when I wanted to make a film, it is just, I really wanted to communicate and to spread out a message and to show that, that fun and that adventure and to that people can take part of it. And today is more like, I have to do something. I have to show something. And it can often be a little bit, I don't know. It's not a poor communication, but it's maybe the sense of what you really feel when you climb is maybe not so there because it's more like impressive when you do like a big jump or it's more just like this hero system is pretty easy and in like socials. But making a film is, is hardcore work. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you made, you made it look easy, so well done. Um, no, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've got a question from, from Adrian. Uh, you'll have to excuse my, my very garbled pronunciation here. Uh, he says, very, impre he says, very impressive. Uh, any recommendation for a first try at Gen Genfer Fellier? Mm -hmm. For the first try? Prefer yeah, definitely yeah. like Deep Lucie. Like Deep Lucie is the, the route just to the right of uh, Merci La Vie. It's a very solid, like seven, all the pitches are in between, I would say 60 plus and 7B. And it's very solid. Like the grades are really hardcore. So, but it's a classic one to do. Like absolutely, like perfect rock and this blue, limestone like super it's 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 super it's mega mega really fantastic i mean all the routes there just look just look fantastic just look amazing and uh we can all yeah. hope to hopefully climb there one day yeah you should so yeah yeah <laughs> um so we have a question about your your climbing partners sean and roger mm -hmm. uh, what were they what were they like as partners and obviously Sean is quite a big personality from what everybody has seen in, in numerous climbing films and on Instagram and in other areas. What's it like to climb with the two of them? Honestly, like Sean is not quiet. Once he is a uh, confident and he's really, he enjoys like spending time with you. He talks so much. Like he is like constantly talking and laughing and like joking around. It's like, it's so the opposite of like what he is when he's not, um, you know, really comfortable. And yeah. it's amazing. Like his flute is always there. He really loves like nature, everything we can eat from nature. He's, he's up to, um, he's super solid in his uh, psych, like the, the head is really good. He's not really, I don't think that he's really afraid of like something. Although once like a skyhook like broke, I don't know, like a hole broke, he took a fall. Like it was so big. And I don't know, in the fall, he somehow switched around and Roger and I were on the belay and he just screamed. And he was looking at us like a wild fall and he's like, ah! That was so good. So I think he was afraid a little bit then, or super surprised. A crack so in his actually, armor. Yeah. So it's actually a really fun person. Um, yeah, big connection to nature. And Roger is a little bit more, he's super experienced. Um, he isn't like just the most talented climber ever, I would say. But this is not negative like he but he has so much power and he can read lines like so good and always he's super he's always taking care that everyone feels great like it can be at the home at his home like he invited all the time everywhere he really managed that the, the vibe is so great and same on the wall like he's a super well organized uh, lots of experience and i don't know he just want to have a good time on the wall too so actually really two partners uh we you can you have a lot of fun with oh fantastic yeah so i mean it looks like you had a great trip with a yes. great couple of trips with them yes <laughs> yeah kind of what we all love about climbing is that sort of camaraderie when we're out 
if yeah. we're on the north face of the Iger or if we're on something a little bit smaller in the UK, it's it's yeah, all the same. So it's all great fun. Yeah, so true. So uh, how has uh, cor- coronavirus uh, impacted your climbing in the last year and a half or so? Have you been able to get out much with the restrictions that have been in place? Well, it changed a lot in my climbing wise. Like climbing life, uh, climbing career, it really it changed a lot. Um, I would say it is. Uh, it had a very, very positive impact on um, on my person, on how I, who I wanted to be, or where I wanted to go. I think more and more. Well, I'm 33. It's not like super old, but uh, the older I get, the more I, I wanted to do things more quietly and more, um, just really like for me and not just being all the time like super busy and like having this event and that and dash and this climb and that climb and whatever, just all this excitement. I was a little bit um, tired of it, I would say. So it actually had a really positive impact. So the first lockdown was, well, uh, more than a year ago now. That was really good. Uh, There was like no climbing and it was interesting to see uh, how I, my reaction was. It wasn't easy. Not at all, especially because I had a, like a planned, uh, like a big project in summer then in Switzerland. So I was always under the stress. Like, I think I lived like the typical hypocrisis of a climber who always says, we are so free person, we're so free. But at the same time, if you can't climb, you're, you, you get crazy. And so to me, it's not really the, the sense of like freedom like uh and also you have to go climbing like you feel good when you climb you you want to feel physically fit and so so i i realized that to me well maybe it's just to me it was a little bit controversial like this oh my god i feel so free as a climber and at the same time oh my god if i can't go climbing i it's it's killing me Mm. that was good i learned that and then honestly switzerland was pretty easy pretty mellow in the summer I did so many good climbs, like uh, the Radicon, spent a lot of time, or just cragging, and then the Eiger. So that was good. France is a little bit harder. Um, it's, uh, well, night now we're in another lockdown where it's just everything is closed and shut down. But it, I don't know. I just had so many things evolving in my life recently that it's not like freaking me out. Like, I don't know. There's I always a bit of a respite for you. I don't know. I have so many other projects going on, like right. a project in a theater, uh, like uh, working on a truck, um, building a climbing wall on a truck. And I don't know. I just learned to have like more, um, just to be super in, super, how do you say, in agree with what I do and with what I want. And I think it's fine. To me, it's more time now to climb in the way I want to climb, but to share more and more. Really to share this like passion we have and like to make climbing possible to everyone and, you know, just opening up like a little bit um, the horizon. So it's actually, I don't know, to me, it was super positive. I feel very more settled, not settled, but calm and in peace. Fantastic. I'm glad that I- Glad it's been a good experience for you and you've got, um, sounds like you've got things to look forward to as well coming coming up, which is great to hear. Yeah. And kind of what, um, what what places and projects are you, you most excited about? Hopefully once coronavirus starts to die down a little bit, what are you excited about getting after? For climbing, you mean? Yes, yeah. Honestly, I miss Greece. <laughs> Greece, okay. Oh yeah, it's such a good place for rock climbing, the life in general, and it's just so perfect, perfect combination of like the clima and the rocks and the people. So I miss that. Yeah, definitely. Oh, fantastic. But I mean, I'm, I'm look like I live in France. I have all the rocks around around my house. House. I can climb like two hours. I'm in Seuss. I can drive three hours. I'm in Gorge of Verdun. I have like so many cliffs and rocks around here. So I'm, I'm definitely not um, complaining. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're in a country. That's actually cool. I haven't been traveling um, 
beside uh, Switzerland and France in so more than a year. And it's it's actually great. I like it. I think a lot of people have realized that throughout this this mm -hmm. whole this whole situation mm -hmm. is that there's a lot you can do whilst staying local and not traveling too far, which is which yeah. is good for everybody. It's just really relaxing and you really appreciate the people you have around you, the people you love, the family. And it's, yeah, I don't know. To me, it's more like back to the to the real essential things in life. Oh, fantastic. Well, that's very positive, uh, very positive note yep. there. Yep. Thank you very much, Nina. <laughs> um, it doesn't look like we've got many more questions coming through. So we'll just give it another couple of moments just in case any uh, anybody's got any last ones for you. but. Just like to say a big thank you for taking some time out of your evening to come on come online with us and share your stories and share some of your thoughts mm -hmm. so it's, uh, it's been a really enjoyable evening so thank you very much thank you <laughs> um so yeah we will uh we'll, we'll probably call it there thank you everybody for uh for tuning in uh, i'm sure that nina is always happy to answer questions on our website and things like that and Hopefully, we'll uh, see see everybody out on the out on the mountain soon. All right, have fun, be safe. Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and thank you, Nina. Welcome. <laughs>